Well, hello. Welcome once again to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it is your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You have reached the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. Hi. It's been a long day. Um, my granddaughter and my great-grandson got on the airplane this morning, and I am late doing my broadcast because I went back to sleep. <laughs> As I promised you, I would give you some information on Project 2025 and the underlying or parallel uh, policy document called uh, Agenda 47. Now, <clears throat> it's going to get deep. I'm going to try to finish this tonight. I don't know if I will, but I'm going to try. Additionally, um, i got some shadows here and some light things going on. Let me see, can I fix it? Um, additionally, uh, <laughs> my great-grandson... Uh, Destroyed my plug, <laughs> my iPad, so I had to get another one. Um, <laughs> he's just a rambunctious four-year-old. And um, so I'm getting my strength back and I'm finding out what things are working and what things are not. And I don't know that this lighting is working, but um, he uh, maybe that's a little better. But at any rate, let's get started. I know you've heard a lot about it. Project 2025. Now you can read the whole thing for yourself if you go to Donald Trump's website. Um, it is posted there. It's also posted online on Wikipedia and you can access it from a few other political sites. I think CBS News. Um, for which um, I'm citing them as a source uh, for my report. Um, you can get access to it in a lot of places. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? In my opinion, it sort of kind of leads credence to its legitimacy um, I want to say in any community, in the senior community, in the black community, in the gay and lesbian community, in any community that's concerned with the policies and, and political rhetoric of Donald Trump, um, if you go to that website, you're being ticked as a person of interest, you know, and it's giving credibility to the whole thing. Now, as I read it, being a researcher, uh, a scientist of sorts, doggone it, it was starting to make sense. But I remember, so did the Nazi propaganda make sense at first. I am not a politician, nor am I advocating for any party or any candidate. What I am saying is vote, period, point blank. If you don't vote, you get what you get. And then after we get it, don't complain. So let me give you what I have. I'm going to try very hard uh, to wrap it up in one video, but I might not. It was just so much. I am going to try. So, here's what I find out. Project 2025 is a partner of or a 
proposal supposedly coming out of the Heritage Foundation, which was founded in 1973 by uh, its leader, Paul Dans. He is a director. And Spencer Chiretin and Toop Hemingway. Their mission is to promote conservative public policies. That's it in a nutshell. But what is Project 2025? It was founded in 2022. And all it says basically is there should be less federal intervention particularly in education, more support for school choice, stringent work requirements for able-bodied individuals and childless adults who are on food stamps, secure the border with um, increased enforcement of immigration laws, mass deportations, and construction of a border wall. Federal agencies and employees would be greatly downsized. That's a couple of bullet points. However, Trump claims he knows nothing about it. He's such a liar. I would just rather you say you were involved. The Heritage Foundation has been uh, involved in the Trump Organization for years. However, he is and does acknowledge Agenda 47. This is what he is calling the formal policy. Agenda 47 and Project 2025 are similar in that they both promote to reissue Executive Order 13957. It is a Schedule F appointment that allows the President the ability to remove civil service protections, making civil servants, people who work for the federal government, easier to fire a way to legally retaliate against federal officials for their for political reasons. I want to recap. Project 2025's purpose is to reshape the federal government to support the agenda of the next Republican president. They have a $22 million budget. Most of the items in Project 2025 invoke changes to taxes that will primarily impact lower income citizens while benefiting those with higher incomes. Additionally, reversal of DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, development of new nuclear weapons, and building more nuclear power plants, dismantling the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration due to it being one of the main um, drivers, one of the main voices of the climate change industry. Project 2025, um, would end Head Start and dismantle the Education Department. Outlaw pornography. It would be a crime to watch pornography. It would give the reinstatement of the Executive Order 13957, as I mentioned earlier. Now, Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation leadership have called their group of 54,000 loyalists. 54,000 that support their ideology. They call them conservative warriors. And they envision that these warriors would march into Washington like an army. 
Wow. Project 2025 is a 900-page mandate that sets the blueprint for a far-right way of taking back control. So let's take a look at some of their partners. And I have counted 101 listed public partners. And these are reported by the Heritage Foundation now. You got to take it with a grain of salt. So I'm going to give you some names. And then I pulled two of them because they were of importance to me and my community, the black community, because I wanted to see what they were about. So again, 101 listed participants, partners, and here's a few of the names. The American Family Project, Americans United for Life, Center for Family and Human Rights, Citizens Against Government Waste, the Claremont Institute, the Discovery Institute, Family Policy Alliance, the Frederick Douglass Foundation. Their site says they are develop, devoted Christians, proud Americans, and active Republicans. Hillside College, the Institute for Women's Health, Mississippi Center, for Public Policy, the Palmetto Promise, Project 21 Black Leadership Network, and they are definitely on their website, conservatives. Native Americans for Sovereignty and Preservation. Job Creators Network, Patrick Henry college. And that's just a few of them. Remember, I said it was 101. So I was a little concerned about the Frederick Douglass Foundation. Um, so I went on their website and I pulled up their information to tell me who they were and what they were about. And like I said, when I first went to their website, it says that they are devoted Christians, proud Americans, and active Republicans. So as I pulled up their About History page, it reads that the Frederick Douglass Foundation is a public policy and educational organization which brings the sanctity of free market and limited government ideas to bear on the hardest problems facing our nation. We are a collection of proactive individuals committed to developing innovative and new approaches to today's problems. Now, I just want to remind you that Frederick Douglass was married twice. His first wife, a few years older than him, gave him children, and um, she went on to die. He was a widow. His second wife, he married, was a white woman who started this foundation. I'm not questioning her motivation or her motives because, of course, she lived with this man. She was the last woman who was married to him. But I am questioning where the foundation went once she went. I don't even know if she's still alive. I doubt it. But to take Frederick Douglass and what he stood for, for our people, and turn this into a conservative, Republican, devoted Christian foundation, I don't know. But you make up your own mind. Do your homework. I'm just saying, doesn't sit right with me. And then... There was no need to pull up the one Project 21 Black Leadership Network. No need. Um, 
I didn't pull anything on them. I did go to their website, conservatives, and I wasn't impressed. But I was a little concerned about Native Americans for sovereignty and preservation. Now, they are on this list. They knew that their people were going to be very upset connecting them to this uh, Project 2025. So you know what they did? They put a whole FAQ. FAQ is uh, questions and answers. <clears throat> on why they joined Project 2025. And as I'm reading it, it doesn't really make sense but they are being lulled into a false sense of protection. Number one, because they believe in the right to life, no abortion. Project 2025 says they will do away with abortion, and pretty much those Trump-appointed um, conservatives on the Supreme Court pretty much did that. Um... These Native Americans say that they are concerned about land and conservation of land and preservation of land. 2025 says they are too. That they don't believe in the climate change and they'll reverse all those rules and all the things that happen uh, under the Biden administration. And these Native Americans for sovereignty and preservation they believe that, and they have enjoined themselves to that. And they have a question here that says, how will Project 2025 address concerns regarding the Indian Health Service? The answer, health care is a critical issue for Native communities. Project 2025 seeks to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of health services. How? How? How do you improve on what we already have? And if you have a plan, say so. This is just smoke and mirrors. We will work to ensure that any proposed changes to the IHS, the Indian Health Service, will enhance service delivery, increase funding, and ensure better health outcomes for our people. Project 2025, and they've got this in bold black writing, does not call to end or eliminate the Indian Health Service. But Project 2025 does call for the elimination of duplicious and uh, agencies and departments within the federal government that they think don't make sense or shouldn't be around. In my mind, if we already have a health system in place, why should we have one that specifically speaks to Indian health? When, in fact, Indians should be able to go to the overall health system and get treatment, which we know is baloney. They need their own health services. Number one, they have different customs and understanding of customs. Some of their senior people who probably are the ones that need health care right now may not even speak English. But they've been lulled into a false sense of security. And that's my take on it. Um, I did pull up some titles of some videos that uh, Project 21, the Black Leadership Network had. They have a, uh, I guess he must be a spokesperson who's done quite a few interviews and given some information on his take on uh, the Biden-Trump presidential campaign. And his name is Horace Cooper. And he has quite a few videos 
They've been covered by Fox News, Fox Sly, Slick News, Fox News. And one of them is called DEI Appointment Diversity uh, Equity and Inclusion Appointment. Kamala Harris is either a liar or completely out of the loop. That's on Fox News. He's calling her Biden's keeper. And then Horace Cooper has another video on Project 21, the National Center, that says leftists' emphasis on identity politics could backfire with Kamala. Clearly, these folks are concerned with Kamala Harris. Again, this video was reported on Fox, Foxy News. So let me go on about Project 2025, and then I'm going to get into Agenda 47, because that, for me, is the real culprit. That, for me, is the real uh program that we should be viewing and investigating. So, Project 2025 is a 900-page mandate that sets the blueprint for a far-right way of taking back control. Kevin Roberts, the president of the Heritage Foundation, said recently in public, quote, we are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be, unquote. All I can say is, if it's a snake, it's a snake. Don't be fooled. The focus has been on Project 2025, which President Biden said should scare every American. But, the eye should be on Agenda 47. That's the real culprit. It is a package of proposed changes that Trump, if elected, would implement. So let's take a closer look at Agenda 47. And at the first of the shared similarities to Project 2025. These are where they're similar. The expansion of presidential power through reissuing Schedule F. And I'll explain to you what Schedule F is later on. Cuts to the Department of Education, mass deportations, death penalty for drug dealers, and use of the National Guard in liberal-led cities. Liberal mostly where blacks and minorities would be residing. Agenda 47 on its own merit includes the following. Freedom cities on empty federal land, investing in flying car manufacturing, offering baby bonuses to encourage a baby boom, and protectionist trade policies. Some of these items are legally controversial and others would require congressional approval while still others would require amending the Constitution. Many of these items are contentious, such as the imposition of the death penalty on drug dealers and human traffickers as well as placing Mexican cartels on the U.S. list of forest foreign terrorist organizations. Agenda 47 has 46 policy videos that have been uploaded to the Trump website. They started in 2022, and the last one was uploaded in December of last year. So, what does Agenda 47 say about the economy? That they would enact restrictions on Chinese ownership of infrastructure in the U.S., 
including energy, technology, telecommunications, farmland, natural resources, medical supplies, and other strategic national natural assets. Presenting future Chinese, preventing future Chinese purchases and forcing the sale of any current holdings. Recovering energy independence by eliminating every unnecessary regulation in the federal registry that hampers domestic production. Agenda 47 proposes a universal baseline tariff on most foreign products, lowering taxes for American workers, families, and businesses. Now, mind you, these are proposals, but they don't propose to tell you how they're going to implement them. What do they have to eliminate? Where do they have to cut? There's no meat to this stuff, but that's my opinion. Agenda 47 seeks to revoke China's most favored nation trade status. I didn't even know they had that. And decreasing trade deficits, especially with China. Somebody has it in for China. <laughs> Agenda 47 proposes to return jobs and wealth to the U.S., launching an economic boom by passing the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. Now, I was going to read that thing to you, but my, um, my iPad has gone down. Let me see. Which one is this? This is under uh, – I have it here somewhere. I may have to um, – I may have to type it in and you can read it uh, on the screen. The Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. Maybe it's up here. And that's education under the economy. Let me see if I can locate it real quick. Here it is. The Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If any country applies a certain percent tariff on American made goods, the same tariff will be applied on theirs. The other countries will have two choices. They'll get rid of their tariffs on us, or they will pay us hundreds of billions of dollars and the United States will make an absolute fortune. This is meant to help the agricultural states and manufacturers. Doesn't that sound like a little boy? Absolute fortune pie in the sky. But again, you do your homework. You make up your mind. And all this is directed at China. Nobody else. Just China. Agenda 47 proposes to terminate all of Biden's Green New Deal policies regarding emissions, regulations, fossil fuels, and electric vehicles. Cutting funding for any school teaching critical race theory. Critical race theory focuses pretty much on the disparity in social and political laws and media, in that racism is systemic and not based only on individual prejudices. You might want to read up on critical race theory. There's a lot going on in this world, and it's being hidden and overshadowed by this, that, and the other. Like I said, the AIDS epidemic, COVID-19, people are still dying, by the way. Now we got our uh, hands all the way up over in Russia and over in uh, the Middle East. Come on, now we can't be all things to all people. And we can't be running around with all this rhetoric because I don't see any basis for sound policy programs that can be implemented in a safe manner that's not going to completely destroy uh, the fabric, uh, 
that has been laid by the founders and that has been around for all this time, tried and true methods. Under Agenda 47, a thing called the 1776 Commission will be reinstated. This commission was established by executive order during the Trump administration. They were charged with writing a report on core principles of the American founding and how these principles may be understood to further enjoyment of, quote, the blessing of liberty. This report was also written and it is to end the radicalized view of American history. You would receive a patriotic education. Agenda 47 also supports homeschooling, using a savings account to spend up to $10,000 a year per child tax-free, with full access to all athletic programs, clubs, and after-school activities tax-free. That sounds good. How will you fund it? Create an American Academy. This would be a world-class education vehicle available to every American free of charge, free education. Funded, now here's where he at least tells you how he's going to do it. Funded by taxing private universities who receive large endowments that are plagued by anti-Semitism. I don't know if that's legal, but if a snake tells you it's a snake, you got to believe that, right? Agenda 47 would expand presidential powers, reducing unnecessary government um, expenditures by restoring impoundment. That's a type of government um, tool uh, that would force every agency to identify parts of their budget that can be reduced. Remember, he wanted to eliminate a lot of these um, uh, agencies that were double dipping and were doing double duty and pretty much all people were doing were sitting there answering the phone. I'm for that, but not with a red pen and just go striking off stuff. I mean, some thought and 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 um, some serious thought needs to go into that. Agenda Forty Seven has reforms on immigration, Im immigration infrastructure, and urban planning. Gender identity reforms, journalism, law enforcement, and overhauling the Department of Justice and appointing 100 U.S. attorneys who will be the polar opposite of the Soros district attorneys. Soros is George Soros, and it is a conspiracy theory. He's a real person, but it is a conspiracy theory that he's behind everything. He's pulling the strings. Uh, behind the U.S. economy. He's pulling the strings by, behind some foreign policies. It's a lot to get into, but Soros, S-O-R-O-S. Look it up. Familiarize yourself with that. Agenda 47 also proposes changes to national security. Social issues that focus on anti-white racism rather than discrimination against people of color. Homeless would be removed from the street using every tool, this is quote, every tool, lever, and authority and in mass unskilled immigration into the U.S. using pretty much by any means necessary. Eradicating drug addiction crisis by imposing a full naval embargo on drug cartels. 
and deploy military assets to inflict maximum damage on cartel operations. And Agenda 47 seeks to sign an executive order to cut off the Biden administration's funding for shelter and transport of immigrants. These redirected funds would go to house homeless American vets. Only if you believe that. Now, this is a lot, and I've only touched on some of the portions of uh, Agenda 47, which is a huge document, and then you have uh, the Project 2025, which is 900 pages. They tell you right up front. And, and you know, certainly we're not going to read them all. Somebody has, and I'm going to keep digging into it, but for tonight, I just want to tell you that all this sounds legitimate. You know, they're tickling your ears. The policies and reforms sound good, some of them. But this is, in my opinion, only to suck you in. And once you're convinced, then they turn the table. Very similar to the Hitler Nazi propaganda tactic that was used that led to the persecution of a race of people that led to the Holocaust lest we forget. So, it is what it is. People will be people. But do not be deceived or lulled into a false sense of empowerment. This looks like it's going to give the power back to the people. That homeschooling and the college education for free all that sounds good but how will you fund it and who gets hurt in the long run and it's just a lot um, with no substance to it in my opinion you gotta do your homework please share like hit the notification bell so you know when I upload another video and remember you don't know what you don't know. Thanks for listening.